3D printing used to be a pretty simple process. You would download some files to an SD card and then use some buttons on your 3D printer to start 3D printing. But just like every other technological task, someone's made a Raspberry Pi operating system for that. But of course, before we go around just creating IoT devices willy-nilly on our network, we need to consult with our IoT consultant, Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi, on the left here, we have just your traditional 3D printer. You know, SD cards and all that. On the right here, we have our Wi-Fi enabled 3D printer, which is the better option. And there's no denying this very rigorous research, 100% market demand for the Wi-Fi enabled 3D printer. Later, off camera, Wi-Fi also assured me that this was not a security risk with yet another IoT device, despite the fact that someone could, you know, access your device over the internet and control something capable of starting fires in your house. You know, no big deal. So how does one go about hooking up a Raspberry Pi to their 3D printer? Well, it's quite easy, with a USB cable. But your Raspberry Pi is going to need a custom operating system as well. You can use the download link in the description from their official site, and then use a utility such as Etcher, if you're on Windows or some other app on a different system. Select your image, leaving it in the zipped folder. Select your micro SD card for the Raspberry Pi, and then click the flash button. Once your SD card has been flashed, then go ahead and let the Raspberry Pi boot up. Having it plugged in with an ethernet cable, or if you've set up Wi-Fi on your SD card, then connect to it over Wi-Fi. But basically, you just need to open up a web browser and visit octopi.local, or the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. Now, assuming you haven't already set up a static IP address for that Raspberry Pi before, such as if it's a newly purchased Raspberry Pi, then you can find the IP address with some utility off the internet, or just go into your router settings and look up devices there. But again, octopi.local removes the need to having to search for an IP address. So now that you've got access to your Octoprint server in a web browser over your local network, you'll want to definitely set that username and password so that it's at least a little bit harder for people to remote into your network and start fires on your 3D printer. Not that this is a common occurrence, I haven't had this happen to me in the last year, but it never hurts. Unless it's a fire, then it would hurt a lot. You can allow the tracking or not. I personally don't need another device tracking me, no matter how anonymous it is. It's a good idea to enable the plugin blacklist as well, so that you don't download any plugins that might brick or impede the performance of your Raspberry Pi printing server. And it's possible for your Raspberry Pi to do slicing on device, to where you just feed it an STL and then it does the slicing on chip, but you don't have to, and I don't either. And then go ahead and tell it about your printer. What size print bed do you have? What are the limits of your axes? And tell it a little bit about your hot end as well. For instance, nozzle size. Now technically, that would be enough to go ahead and start 3D printing. But if it ain't broke, customize the settings not knowing what they do until it is. A lot of this stuff in serial connection doesn't matter. Printer profiles, you've already done that. Temperatures, you will want to change. If you would like to preheat your 3D printer to print a specific material, or if you just want to heat up the nozzle in order to change materials, definitely go and create some presets for that. For instance, a lot of the PLAs I print are at 220 degrees Celsius, so I would want to change that as well. But you'll definitely want that material change temperature setting, where you just set some temperature for the extruder and no temperature for the bed. And then I don't really print in ABS at all, but I do occasionally use PETG, so I'm creating a preset for that where it mostly just warms up the bed, and then once I download the print, it'll heat up the nozzle for the print. One other great thing you can do with Octoprint, the Raspberry Pi server, is hook up a USB webcam, which you can pick up for $4 on Amazon, eBay, basically anywhere, and you can view the 3D printing through the webcam over your network. I recommend also increasing the G-code visualizer size, 100 megs is plenty, but basically if your G-code is over 20 megabytes, the default limit, then it's not going to show the progress of the G-code over your web browser. 
You can change your appearance a little bit, but there's plugins you can download such as Themify that will give you greater control and even a dark mode. The plugin manager is a rabbit hole that we will go down in another video, but once you've created all your settings, it's a good idea to create a backup of those settings so that if you have multiple printers that you want Wi-Fi connected, you can go and copy your configuration between them, or if your Raspberry Pi breaks or dies or whatever, or if you want to use it for something else, then you can use your configuration on the next Raspberry Pi that you use. Once you're done messing around with your settings, not knowing fully what they all do just yet, then go ahead and hit save. This is my print server with all of its plugins fully loaded and in the progress of a print right now. You can see in the bottom left corner there's an upload button and a list of G-code files already on here that are stored on the Raspberry Pi, not the printer's SD card. I can see that it's printing. I have the option for dry runs, thanks to another plugin, so it moves the nozzle but doesn't extrude any material or apply any heat. And all of this is in the G-Code Visualizer tab where it shows me each layer what it's doing. And I can also go to the temperature settings and change the temperature in real time. And then when it's not printing, I can adjust the speed. Now at first, I thought that one trade-off I would have to make is not being able to change the speed of the print in real time, you know, twisting the knob back and forth. But if you adjust the feed rate, that is the rate at which it feeds commands into your 3D printer. The way this works is your Raspberry Pi is feeding commands to your printer over that USB cable. So that means if you want your 3D prints to, you know, finish, don't unplug your Raspberry Pi from the 3D printer at any point. There's a terminal to where you can view the G-code being processed in real time, and you can record time lapses of your 3D prints. Octolapse is one plugin that will definitely get talked about more in depth in a future video, but basically if you're tired of the seizure time lapses of 3D prints, Octolapse will actually steady the print head as it takes each picture so that there's no seizure can't really tell what it is nonsense going on. But if nonsense is your thing, then make sure to check out some of the t-shirts I have linked in the description and some of these other videos which are guaranteed to contain at least 10% of your daily recommended dose of nonsense. Until then, I'll see you in the next one.